All right, so got a 03 Sequoia. Uh, the other day I replaced the battery in it and the battery was five, six years old. And when I put the new battery in, truck fired right up, uh, no issues, but I did notice that I now had an ABS and VSC traction control lights that were on. Um, I've seen these lights several times in the past. Uh, typically, anytime there's a check engine light, uh, when I had the bad O2 sensor or the O2 sensor before that, um, they, anytime you've got a, a engine running condition, it turns your traction control off as well. So I've seen those in the past, um, but this time there's no check engine light. It's just the ABS, the VSC track, the VSC off, and then the parking brake light and it stays on. Um, so I, I've got a cheap, like just generic OBD2 scanner, um, but this is, I've had this for a long time and it will only do engine codes. It won't do body codes or ABS codes or anything like that. So this is not an option for me. Uh, for diagnosing this problem. But uh, I did find a procedure online where you can um, use the dash and jumping a couple pins and get the ABS trouble codes. Okay, so down here under the dash, uh, right above the gas pedal, you'll see this white plug here. Uh, that is your OBD2 connector. I'll put a picture up here of the layout. But basically you just need a solid piece of wire, uh, a paper clip that's straightened out and bent into a U-shape. You want to jumper the TC and CG pins. Okay, so I've got pins TC and CG connected together, and now let's start it up. And so you can see my ABS light is on, and my VSC lights are both on solid. Uh, typically, whenever there's a code, when you've got these pins connected, uh, the ABS light will flash in whatever pattern for that code, and the VSC lights will flash for that pattern but I do know that with the ABS light staying solid, that indicates a malfunction with the skid control ECU. So let me show you what that means. So looking under the hood, if you look over here to the left, this little component that has all of these brake lines running into it, this is your ABS module. Here on the right side of it, you'll see this black plastic box. And if you go around to the back, you will see this big wiring connector. Big old bundle of wires comes in from the bottom. And so this black box here is the skid control ECU. So down on the front side of this, uh, you'll see a part number right above that barcode. This particular one on my 2003 is 89541-0C060. Now, I know there were at least two technical service bulletins that I found that indicate that there was a software update to the skid control software, and the fix for it is to replace that. Um, and the updated number is 89541-0C062. So I definitely have the older version in here. Um, so I'm going to swap this out. So I was able to find a used unit on eBay uh, with the correct updated part number. And I got the entire ABS module. Now this does unbolt from this aluminum housing. Here you can see that number upside down, 89541-0C062. But it does require some external Torx. You'll need its a Torx bit, but an internal Torx. So I'll post a link to one of these down below. Um, so I got these three loosened up and you just pull out of there. And then this entire thing, you just kind of need to wiggle it off. And if you flip it over, you can see there's a bunch of rods that come out of that ABS pump. And I guess these are kind of like little pressure sensors in there maybe that these rods push on and signal the traction control to do what it does. So. Um, note there is a little electrical connector that slides in there and there's no fluid or anything uh, but you want to make sure when you take it off there's not any dust or dirt or anything so to get this unplugged there's a little push tab a little like serrated button you have to push that in and it releases this lever and you just kind of have to rock it upward so um, because a lot of dust and dirt and grit get in here, you kind of have to work at it, but you can kind of just rock it up and down. And eventually, 
You might even be able to spray like some contact cleaner or something down in here. Um, but what's happening when you move this, these little white blocking tabs are going down to release this. So just keep working with it. And there, it finally released. And now I can wiggle this off. And there we go. And this is unplugged now. Now something to keep in mind here, when you do this, this will require you to register this new skid control ECU with your vehicle. Um, I have found a process online. I'm hoping that it works, but we'll find out. But just know that this is something that needs to be done. If you can't end up doing it on your own and doing a zero point calibration afterwards, uh, you would have to take it to a dealer to do with their TechStream Toyota specific scan tool. But I've got the three bolts out or three little screws. Now I'm just gonna wiggle this off to get it to unseat. And so these two outside lines, I'm gonna have to flex a little bit, I think. One eternity later. So I was able to get this original one out. Um, this, this electrical connector that sticks way out makes it kind of challenging. Uh, because you got to slide it out this way far enough to clear the end of this, but you end up hitting these brake lines here. So um, this one that just goes to this front wheel right underneath here, I just kind of bent up. I reached down here lower, bent it up a little bit. Um, the this fourth one, uh, um, same thing. You got to bend it out this way. Uh, you just want to make sure you don't kink anything. And then uh, the thicker one here. Um, I just kind of pivoted up, it up just a little bit. And so that got me where I could get enough clearance out. And then I dropped this down so it would go between the uh, first row of pins here. And then I was able to just kind of turn the corner. So let me get the new one and get it in here. All right, so installation is just gonna be reverse. See how I've kind of got it tilted back with the electrical connector going between the pins. And you just kind of gotta wiggle it into place, line up all the pins, and plug it in. Okay, I still have the TC and CG pins connected together, and let's turn the key on and see what's up. So I didn't start it this time, but you can see I now have an ABS light flashing constant, which I think that indicates that there is no code, uh, but you can see my VSC track is spitting out a pattern. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So 47. So let's take a look, see what that is. Um, the VSC light that was flashing a 47, uh, that is a center diff lock switch malfunction or center diff lock circuit malfunction or something along those lines. But that could be a code that was stored in this skid control ECU prior to it being removed from the original vehicle and remove jumper. Now we're gonna do key on. So I expected the VSC lights to come back on because I haven't done zero point calibration, but my ABS light is off, that is good. All right, so let's uh, see if we can't register this thing. To register this new skid control ECU, with the vehicle, um, first you have to turn the key to on because I have a four wheel drive. I leave it in park and then I move my uh, four wheel drive lever up to L4. Uh, if you don't have the lever and you have push buttons, after turning the key on, you're supposed to put it in neutral, hit the L4 button and then put it back in park. So um, key on, I'm in park and I'll put this in L4 and the VSC buzzer should sound. and now key off and that should register to the vehicle um, now we're going to do the zero point calibration so
you need to make sure your steering wheel is centered. Um, so the process is center your wheel, turn the key off. You want to jump the TS and CG pins down there. So same pin as before, CG was on the bottom row, um, but TS is somewhere else. Um, a lot of the diagrams I found online showed that the TS pin was to the left of the TC pin, um, but looking for a 2003 Sequoia, at least a 2003 limited with four wheel drive Sequoia, uh, it is one pin to the right of the TC. Um, and so uh, this little snippet from the wiring diagram shows the data link connector and the TC and TS pins and the wire colors coming into them. And so from here, I got it out of the bracket and I was able to look at wire colors here. So you see that pink and black wire is our TC pin, the one right next to it, the red and blue wire is our TS pin. We're gonna start it for, let it run for four seconds. And then we're gonna turn the wheel at least five degrees in either direction and then bring it back to center. And then down here on the dash, uh, either your track button or your center diff button, if you've got a four wheel drive, press that three times within three seconds and we should hear a buzzer sound. So that indicates that zero point calibration was reset back to zero. So wheel is centered, start it up. So gonna go five degrees. Back to middle and then key off and jump her out. All right guys, so it's been a couple days since I did the initial zero point calibration. Um, and so today I went and went to a big open parking lot. Uh, and I, I originally thought it was required to do the zero point calibration as far as like these additional steps. Now I realize it's just a, um, an analog way, so to speak of verifying that the various sensors that are used for your stability control and traction control, um, that all of the sensors are working properly. So uh, the process, there's a couple different ones. There's a deceleration sensor, a yaw sensor, a brake master cylinder sensor, steering angle sensor, and speed sensors. Each one kind of has their own test procedure. Uh, so you have to start off with a good uh, zero point calibration. Um, and then to test them, uh, you get to a big open parking lot you short the TS and CG pins again, um, start the engine, let it run for a couple seconds just to make sure everything gets initialized. And then the, the very first test is um, checking the D cell and yaw sensor. And so the process of that is you drive forward slowly, like two, three miles an hour, and you just turn to make. So you end up parallel to where you were, just facing the opposite direction. Um, and you'll hear a beep as you're turning. And then once you get stopped and parallel with where you were, you put it in park. And then if you get a long beep, uh, that means that your yaw sensor is good. Um, the next thing to do is with the engine still running, still in park, um, take your foot off the brake for a second or more, and then reapply the brake and push it down as hard as you can and hold it. And if you hear a beep, it means your master cylinder pressure sensor is good. The instructions that I have, they were written uh, on a forum. I'll, I'll link that down in the description. But um, the guy that was doing those or that wrote these instructions, uh, he had a 2001. And so I don't know if something's changed between 01 and 03. Um, but the checking the steering angle sensor, uh, the process of that is you turn your steering wheel all the way to one side and hold it for a second. And then you turn it all the way to the other side and hold it for a second and you're supposed to get a, a beep with that, and that indicates that your steering angle sensor is good. Uh, and then the next test is testing the speed sensors. And so the process of that is you get out and you drive it in a straight line at 30 miles an hour uh, for 10 to 15 seconds. Successful indicator with that is your ABS light will turn off uh, because it's kind of flashing the whole time. So if your ABS light turns off, uh, it means that your speed sensors are good. That one, I also did not have an area 
with a long enough straight stretch that I could do 30 miles an hour for 10 to 15 seconds. There's always curves and bends in the road. Um, so I was unable to, to get that working either um, or to verify that. Um, but once you get to a safe place that you can stop and put it in park, uh, you can then go back and use the same uh, ABS code checking mechanism by shorting the TC and CG pins, turning the key on, starting the engine, whatever, and watching for the VSC or the ABS light flashing. Um, if they're flashing in a pattern with, you know, pauses in between them, it indicates there's a, an error code, some sensor's not working or something. Um, but if all of the lights are flashing a steady pace, uh, it means there's no codes, um, no sensors or anything are, are throwing codes. So um, I don't have any codes on mine. There was the two, the, the steering angle sensor and the speed sensor. I was unable to verify that they're good, um, but I know there's one corner that always initiates traction control. So I took that corner and once again, it, it beeped at me, applied ABS. So I think everything's working properly how, it, how it's supposed to be working. But I think that's it. Uh, check down in the description for links to these things. And if you have any questions or comments, definitely leave it down below. Until next time, see you later.